being tail isn't what I'd call new. Only this time it was different. Under usual circumstances, I'd abduct my shadow. But this time I was amused. By accident a couple of times, I almost slipped away. However, I quickly corrected my error. After all, it's not fair to lose a lady's shadow, especially an attractive one. I noticed she was wearing high heels, so I walked up and down a few of the higher hills in San Francisco. This was my second time around Fisherman's Wharf. Whoever she was, I figured she not only had to be tired, but by now her feet had to be killing her. It was time to stop having fun. Time to find out what this was all about. An attractive woman shouldn't have to chase a man. I headed for a quiet street and waited for my bloodhound to show. I didn't have to wait long. I've been following you ever since you left your hotel room. I know. Can you buy me a cup of coffee? Sure. you from an old newspaper picture. I figured we were both in San Francisco for the same reason. I couldn't find him. I hoped you would. Find who? Anton Morgay. <sighs> Mike, maybe it'd be easier for you if I told you my name. I'm Nancy Trout. Do you know anyone named Bill Trout? My brother. How is he? He's dead. He's been dead for five years. You know that. Yeah, I know that. Anton Morgay killed him. For years, every time I could save a few hundred dollars, I started looking for Morgay. Finally, I gave up. And then by accident, two days ago, I saw him here in San Francisco. Do you believe me, Mike? I'm listening. When I saw you, I, I put two and two together and, and thought maybe you could lead me to Morgay. And if you're right and you do find him, what are your plans? One thing. Kill him. Anton Morgay was a man and a name I hated. I tried to figure Nancy's angle. Her story had sounded almost too pat. I wanted Morgay, and a lot of people knew it. I didn't want to kill him. I wanted the state to do that. I decided to go back to my hotel when I spotted Nancy Trout again. Only this time I wasn't amused. I couldn't forget Anton Morgay, and I was tired of being followed. I cut across the street and headed for an alley. It took no time to shake her. I wondered again about her angle and what connection she really had with Morgay. I had known Bill Trout a long time, and he'd never mentioned his sister. I thought about the men that Morgay had murdered, and I wanted only one thing. I wanted it so bad I could taste it. I wanted Anton Morgay. And suddenly I had a hunch that maybe Morgay wanted me and had sent a phony Nancy Trout as a decoy. There was only one trouble with that hunch. I never got time to finish it because a building fell on me. It was a big building. It was like coming out of a bad dream. My head ached and my ribs were on fire. My mouth was as dry as a desert. I headed for the Fairmont Hotel. I had to figure out what this was all about. 
When I had the answer, I was going to declare an extra dividend for my welcoming committee. The voice on the phone belonged to a man. He said one thing, get out of town. Expecting you. Yeah. Let's stop fencing around then, huh? It's okay with me. You said Bill Trout was your brother. That's right. Bill and I were pretty good friends. He never mentioned having a sister. <laughs> I don't know why I never brought it up. Maybe because a younger sister didn't make for a very interesting conversation. Maybe. Mike, I heard Bill talk about you many times. Like what? Like the time you and he were in Rome together. Go on. And the time you bailed him out after he made that bad oil deal? Why didn't you look me up sooner? You're not an easy guy to catch up with. Finally, I gave up. No use writing to a man that doesn't receive his mail. No. If I'd known Bill had had a sister, I'd have found you. Mike. Before Bill left, he told me that you and Anton Morgay were sailing with him for Key West. It had something to do with, with salvaging a German submarine that had been sunk in 44 with a gold cargo. That's right. We located the submarine and the gold. And then what happened? We sent the gold ashore with Morgay. You read the rest in the newspapers. The salvage boat blew up. Everyone was killed. The authorities said it was an accident, but it wasn't. I've been looking for Morgay ever since. And not because of the gold he stole. Mike, do you mind if I ask you a question? One that's bothered me for a long time. Well, it's obvious why Anton lived, but why weren't you aboard? Well, an hour or two after Anton left with the gold. We needed some supplies, so I left for them. I was about 100 feet away when the boat blew. I woke up a week later in the hospital. When the newspapers printed that I'd survived, Anton disappeared. Do you think you'll be able to find him? If he's in San Francisco, I'll find him. For both of us? No, this is where you get off. But... And please stop following me. A little earlier, I had a very special invitation. I left for New York ten minutes ago. Now that I've finally caught up with you, please be careful. Sure. I found one character, but he swore he hadn't seen Morgay in over five years. He added he always figured the guy had left the country. The next guy said he hadn't seen Anton Morgay either. But he told me something else. He gave me the address of Anton's wife, Fran Morgay. I lost no time in getting to the house. I had the feeling I was closer to Morgay than I'd been in five years. I thought about Fran Morgay. In her way, she was as rotten as Anton. And I wondered something else. I wondered if she was expecting me. Sorry to bother you. Is Mrs. Morgay home? Won't you come in? Sure, thanks. I'm Helen Harper, Fran's niece. Oh. I'm Michael Lanyard. My aunt no longer lives here, Mr. Lanyard. Oh. Do you know where I can reach her? No, but my father will be back late this afternoon. Perhaps he might know. When did your aunt move? About a year ago. If it's important, I'll telephone my father and... Let you talk to him. No, it can wait. How about your uncle? 
Anton Morgay. Well, I haven't seen him in more than five years. That's a long time. Would you like to leave your phone number? I'll have Father call you. <laughs> I'll try and get back late this afternoon. Then I was tipped that Lieutenant Halsey wanted to see me. Halsey had given me an answer. Vino wasn't far away. I figured it was worth a try. I grabbed the first open plane reservation. Looking for the jackpot, Fran Morgay. First, I checked into the Riverside Hotel, made some telephone calls, and asked some questions. Got some answers, but not the right one. I said I wanted Fran Morgay, that she was somewhere in Reno. I figured it was only a matter of time before I got a result. The day Anton Morgay blew up the boat, he believed everyone had died. The way I saw it, he'd have been better off if I'd died too. I wasn't sure if this time I'd catch up with Anton, but I did know that no matter how long it took, I'd keep looking until I found him, and that someday too I'd have the pleasure of looking at his grave. That evening I got a break. A manager of one of the clubs knew where Fran was staying. I took off for his casino. seen her the night before. She'd cashed the check, said she was living at the Valley Hotel. He told me to cut through the back of the club and turn right at the corner. I think I just managed to say thanks. I was real anxious to hear Fran's story. I've been expecting you, Mike. It's nice seeing you again. What do you want? Where's Anton? If I knew where Anton was, I'd string him up alive. That's a switch. He walked out on me five years ago. I wish I could believe you. If I knew where he was, I'd tell you. He's back. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. He'll kill us both. Mike, stop looking for him. Let him alone. I want to catch up with him. You're crazy. I mean it. You know Anton. Nothing stands in his way. You're making us both sitting ducks leave well enough alone. If you see him, tell him I'm getting close. Tell him not to stop looking backwards. Tell him it's only a matter of time. But, Mike... And tell him I don't believe you. Fran Morgay was lying, and I knew it. I figured she'd make a mistake, so I asked someone to keep track of her and to call me at my hotel if she tried to leave town. I headed back to the Riverside Hotel, because if I was right, my phone was going to ring. I wanted to shave badly, but it would have to wait. When my phone rang, I had an idea who it was. I wasn't wrong. Fran had checked out and was driving back to San Francisco. I remember the old song, San Francisco, Here I Come. Nancy Trout at the Palace Hotel and ask her to come right over. I had an idea, and if I was right, this chase might be almost over. I felt good, because I figured Anton Morgay's grave was being dug. Thanks. I started to shave again, but like before, I would just have to wait. Nancy, come in. Hello, Mike. Do you know Fran Morgay? Yes, that's Anton's wife. That's right. I want you to keep an eye on her house. If you see either Anton or Fran, call me here. 
Here's her address. And Nancy, be careful, huh? Twenty minutes later, I finally finished shaving. There was nothing to do but wait for Nancy to call me. Hello? It was Nancy. She was excited. She said she saw two women enter the house. One she didn't recognize. The other was Fran Morgay. I told her to wait for me a block away from the house, that I'd meet her right away, and not to take any chances. I grabbed a cab and told the driver where to let me off. I said a quiet prayer, because I knew that five years of searching for Anton Morgay was practically over. I was grateful, too, that Bill Trout's sister had recognized and tried to shadow me. And I saw Nancy and tried not to laugh. She reminded me of a faithful detective out of a pulp magazine. Mike, you were right. Calm down. Is Fran still in the house? Yes, because only one woman came out. Oh. Where did she go? They took her away in an ambulance. So help me, about ten minutes ago, they took her out in a stretcher. You sure it was a woman? I'm positive. Was there a name on the ambulance? Oh, I didn't notice. Okay, get going. Where? Back to your hotel. Will you telephone me? Sure, sure. I figured Fran Morgay returned to San Francisco to contact Anton. That meant Anton's muscle men would probably be in the house. I decided to go through the cellar. All things being equal, the element of surprise would work for me. There was only one catch. I was the one in for the surprise. Van Morgay was dead. Under the cellar steps was a fresh grave. For a moment I felt sick because it meant I had to begin looking for Anton all over again. I was sorry I hadn't taken this joint apart the first time. I felt like a fool as I remembered the little girl who told me she hadn't seen her uncle in years. Then I heard a noise behind me. If I hadn't turned my head, the lights would have gone out permanently. This gorilla wasn't kidding. Neither was I. Where's Morgay? Where's Anton Morgay? hiding, and then a bell rang. Nancy had said a woman left in an ambulance. It was just crazy enough to be right. I figured I didn't have too much time, and I had to find the right hospital. I checked every independent ambulance service in town, and finally found the one who had picked up the woman at Fran's house, a rest home on Neely Avenue. Lieutenant Halsey and told him to meet me at the Melrose Rest Home. I said I might have a present for him. The ambulance driver told me the woman he delivered was on the second floor, room B. When I saw the attendant, I ducked. This time I didn't want anything to go wrong. I thought about the miles I'd traveled in my five-year hunt for Anton. If I'd found him the first year, I would have killed him. Now all I wanted to do was to turn him over to the state. In a way, it was a small payment for the lives he'd taken when he blew up the boat. And I reached the room. I realized I'd never been this close to finding Morgay before. When I 
saw him, Morgay seemed like a small poisonous snake, and just as dangerous. You've lost weight, Anton. All right, Lanyard, cut it short. I've wanted to see you for a long time. So I've heard. Okay, now what? I didn't know you could get into Fran's clothes. Neither did anyone else. The police will figure she was murdered over gambling bets. When she left Reno, she owed a mint. Why did you kill her? Because she was the only one that could lead you to me. I tried it her way. Duck out of San Francisco. Go to Reno. Double back. It didn't work. So I eliminated the one person that could lead you to me. I guess I miscalculated. I guess you did. Like that day on the boat. <laughs> You understand money? Let's make a deal. I heard the siren, and as I looked out of the window, I saw Lieutenant Halsey entering the hospital. It was all over. Morgay had dug his own grave. I wondered why people like him had to be born. I wondered when people like him would cease to exist. The next day, I was on my way to keep a date with a very special girl. I thought about the time she'd followed me. And I realized, sometimes it pays to be followed. And sometimes it pays not to make it too tough. I was glad I'd made the right decision. It's been quite a week, hasn't it? Yeah. I'm glad it's over. I feel it's time for a rest. Where will you go? <laughs> so that I'll be able to write you. No more letters coming back. I'll write you. That's the easiest way. Mike. Yeah. I'm glad I found you. I'm very glad my brother was your friend. So am I. 